Hi there. Welcome to the first chapter of the new tracks modeling build along of Kiga's Garage and Repair. This is a great little kit produced by Interaction Hobbies. We will be building the HO scale version of this kit, but the O scale version is very similar. We will do our best to point out the differences between these kits along the way. This kit has a lot of character built into the design. With some patience and attention to detail, we hope to assist you in turning this kit into one looker of a building for your layout. So, let's clear the workbench and get started. Now it is time to see all the stuff that is included in the kit. So, let's open it up and see what is inside. The first item is our full color instructions. The instruction manual for Kegas is 23 pages long. It is chocked full of detailed steps, tips and techniques to make things as simple as possible for the builder. Next is the parts identification sheet. It has part numbers that correspond to the instruction manual. Then there is the template sheet that provides full-size dimensions for cutting and placing bracing for the structure. Full color graphics are provided for the awning, signage and interior walls. The wall sheets are laser cut clapboard sheets milled from basswood. In the O scale kit, the walls are doubled up for thickness and stiffness. Also, there are some basswood detail parts and some cabinet bits and pieces. The building foundation is laser cut from matte board. There is a doubler for the floor that makes assembly of the walls easy and precise. Next we have the laser cut windows doors and details sheets. These are made from various thicknesses of resin impregnated board material. This material holds detail well and is easy to work with in sanding and gluing. There is laser cut glazing for your windows and a piece of fine tulle fabric. This is used for the screen doors that are provided. Some black paper is provided for the tar paper roofing. Here we have a basic lighting kit to light the interior of the building. It includes an LED strip light and some two conductor wire. Lastly, we have the parts bag. It contains various sizes of dimensional strip stock and bracing. There is a chimney, stove pipe, and lamp shades along with a piece of phosphor bronze wire for the awning and gooseneck lamps. And there is even a tiny 3D printed shop cat included to keep the mice out of the garage. Let's talk about tools and supplies. We are not going to go into detail on every tool you need to build a laser cut kit, as you have seen that a number of times during these types of build sessions. You can find our suggestions for tools and supplies in the beginning of the instruction manual. Instead, we will now highlight the key bits of kit that stand out to help you improve your model building game. We won't go on about the right blade or razor for you, but we will mention that it is important to have fresh blades of your favorite type on standby. Nail file cards with a 220 grit finish are all you need to clean up parts and remove the nubs left after removing parts from their carrier sheets. Two sets of fine point tweezers will make it easier to assemble the smallest of parts and position them where they need to go. We say two sets as you will see the first set disappear in front of your eyes as you just had them in your hands two seconds ago. These Tomia sprue cutters are indispensable in trimming rafters, trimming ill-forming tabs, and truing up roofing. You can find more on these in our tool tip video from a while back. Having a decent set of dry brushing brushes will assist in applying realistic weathering effects to the siding and trim. A very valuable tool that can really help age wood siding is an old stiff paint brush that has had much of the fibers set with old paint. 
The stiff nature of the bristles are just right for enhancing the wood grain without damaging it too much like a wire brush would. As far as glue goes, we use Scotch quick drying tacky glue. It dries very quickly and is forgiving in cleanup as long as you don't let it set up completely. You can however use any PVA glue that you would like on the basswood and resin board material of the kit. Also, these pinpoint glue applicators are absolutely necessary to put glue precisely where you want it. They are readily available on Amazon or at craft stores in the paper crafters area. For the building colors, you can use whatever acrylic paints that you would like, but the following Vallejo paints are what we use and recommend. These high quality model paints have stronger pigments with less fillers than the cheaper craft store acrylic paints, so they go down smoother and provide better coverage overall. Sorry that it is a bit of an eye chart, but you can come back to this part of the video and freeze the picture to get the paint colors. As well, we will post this in the comments section on our YouTube site. And of course, you can choose to paint your building and trim in whatever colors suit your fancy. Let's start the construction process by bracing the wall panels to prevent potential warping. For this process, we have provided a full-sized bracing template sheet. Using the supplied 1 8 inch square strip stock, cut the bracing to fit the walls as shown in the bracing template. Note that the bracing does not come all the way to the bottom edge on some of the wall panels. This is because of how the doubled up foundation fits against the bottom of the wall. Make sure the bracing ends a little over 1 16th of an inch from the bottom of the wall panel, as shown on the bracing template. Cutting your bracing in this manner is quick and accurate. There is a bit of sanding to do on each end, but that goes quickly and will make for a nice tight fit. Place the bracing as accurately as you can, in accordance with the bracing template. It is important to consider the location of the bracing, so that it will not interfere with the assembly process later on. You will note that for some of the wall panels, we have left them in the carrier sheet while we apply the bracing. This will assist with minimizing warping during any staining and painting that you do. Apply the glue to one face of the bracing and press it to the wall, making sure to closely match it to the bracing template. Make sure you don't get any glue into the laser cut slots. Also be sure to clean up any excess glue squeeze out to keep your work clean and tight. Continue the process until you have all the bracing in place. For the bracing around the front windows, make sure the bracing does not obstruct any of the window openings. If needed, 
you can sand the bracing slightly to reduce its thickness before gluing it in place. Now we can turn our attention to prepping some parts for painting. The 3D printed corbels have support pins to be removed. You can do this with some sprue cutters or nippers to snip the pins from the back of the corbel. Send the back face so it will fit flat against the wall panel. Glue the corbels to a cork or scrap piece of wood and set them aside to let the glue set. A good tip here is to cover your paint tray with tin foil. This will allow you to reuse the tray a number of times, without it always being gummed up with paint. For painting the clapboard walls like the ones in this kit, we like to paint them while they are still in the carrier sheet. This helps with minimizing warping while the paint dries. You could stain the walls prior to painting, but for a little newer look, we are going to apply light coats of our base color to the walls. Two light coats should do it. The idea here is to just color the wood and not have a thick coat of paint that covers up the wood grain. Make sure to paint the inside of the wall panels, as you will see these through the front windows. For applying paint to the wood trim, an easy way to get an even coat is to wet a paper towel with the paint you are using. Then squeeze the paper towel around the wood strip and pull it through the paper towel. Repeat this process a couple of times to get an even finish on the strip wood. To paint the remaining detail parts either brush coat the sheets, or use a sponge to sponge on the paint to the carrier sheet of parts. For painting window frames and mullions, we like to use these cosmetic sponge wedges to apply an even coat with no brush strokes or fear of breaking the delicate window mullions. Again, a number of light coats is much better than trying to do it all in one heavy messy coat. Some of the parts will have both sides showing on the finished model, so be sure to paint the backside of the sheet as well, where required. Paint the corbels with a detail brush and make sure you do not cover up the nice detail with too much paint. Again, a couple of light coats is all you need here. Then, using a mixture of trim color and off-white, lightly dry brush the corbels to highlight the detail. Use some panel line wash to further highlight the fine details in the corbel. The panel line wash is a spirits-based wash, so it will not affect the acrylic paint like an alcohol-based stain would. Now we will give the clapboard a wash of a darker shade to form some shadows in the bottom of the clapboards. Spend a bit of time to get the right thin, but milky consistency, for the wash. Let this dry completely before proceeding to the next step. Using a mixture of our clapboard color and off-white, we can lightly dry brush the clapboard to bring out the detail even more. Make sure to brush against the grain of the clapboard to highlight the edges of the clapboards.
Using the old paint brush we discussed earlier, or some steel wool, burnish the clapboard as shown here. This will remove any fuzz that the painting process produced, as well, it will slightly enhance the grain of the wood. Well, there you have it. This is a good place to stop and have a beer, take a break and reorganize the messed up workbench. In the next chapter, we will start the assembly of the foundation, wall sections, and then get the building assembly underway. We hope you are enjoying this build so far. If you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask in the chat, or drop us an email. That's it for now from Interaction Hobbies. Everyone, keep on modeling, and have a great day.